Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house as we gather together for worship on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Um, we kind of transfer over and, and observe the, uh, the celebration of the Epiphany, uh, the Ascension of our Lord. Um, that uh, uh, officially the, the, the Ascension is, is the 40th day after Easter, which is always a Thursday, Ascension Thursday. But we kind of pull it over to Sunday because it's so important we want to remember to celebrate. After 40 days among his disciples after the resurrection, our Lord ascends into heaven. But that doesn't mean he's left us. But that he now fully uses his divine power to be with us in a very real, although unseen ways. Now he is hidden under words, water, bread and wine. But he remains with us still. Today we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion in which we recognize the true body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins and because coming forward is to confess that you are in full agreement with this congregation in doctrine and practice. Please be sure that you have read, you understand, and you agree uh, with our communion policy printed inside the front cover of your bulletin. Um, our communion practice is we uh, I, I come, I come by everyone along the rail first with, uh, with the body of Christ, the host of bread, and then following after me is the elder holding a tray of individual cups of wine. In the middle are a few uh, cups that, that are the, the, a, a drop or two of wine diluted in water for those who, who have severe difficulty with alcohol. Um, but we also offer the, the, the common cup, the chalice, which I'll come by with after uh, after the elder goes by with the, with the, the tray of individual cups. If you take an individual cup, please make sure that as I come by with the chalice, I can still see your, your, your cup so that I'm not shoving the chalice in your face expecting you to drink from it. Okay, a little help on my part uh, for that. Then after, after I've kind of acknowledged that you have to put it down in the world. In, in, in the little uh, uh, trays that they have there um, for it. Um, please remember to fill out the friendship pads that are in the, that are in the pews along the inside uh, uh, center aisle there. Um, that's the way we uh, used to help keep track of uh, attendance and for you to be able to uh, register for communion that way. And for us to be able to stay better in touch with you, it's, the, it's probably the best way to uh, indicate if you have a, a change of address or a new phone number or an email for us to be able to keep on our records. So that's a great way of doing that. Thank you. Um, also, remember that you can always watch the service again after it's been posted to our YouTube page. Um, there's a link to the service on our website and on our Facebook page. Also, on our website, you can just listen to the sermon on an audio file. Those, those are available too, so we've got both audio and video files available there. Are there any other announcements that didn't make? Yes, Nancy. Um, check your mailboxes. There is a flyer regarding our seminary family. They got a very busy next two months. Um, in June, they... Um, they will be celebrating their fifth wedding anniversary, and their little boy will be turning two. So to get you the dates, and we're collecting, we're having a, a um, card shower for them. There's a bag back next to the gold box where we're collecting for their moving expenses if it, um, for the next two weeks. So they'll be here on June 12th, and they'll receive all that. So we only got two Sundays to get the cards to them uh, put in the bag to help them celebrate their special days. Okay, thank you. Yes. So, I dropped the ball, but next Saturday is Owen's graduation party, so you're all invited from um, 2 to 6 here at the church, uh, Saturday, June 4th, to celebrate Owen graduating high school. <laughs> Greatest be God, hallelujah. <laughs> 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 he he, yes. he done me graduating. <laughs> he's the last one. And he's the last one. Amen. <laughs> 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 Any other answers? Okay.
Okay, our order for worship this morning is Divine Service Setting 2. Starting on page 167. Um, uh, it's, the, it's all the same words as it used to from setting one. It's just a slightly different musical setting. It's a little bit different. So just uh, uh, the vowel will be playing and I'll be singing and you kind of follow along. You'll get, get, to, uh, get to learn it. We'll be using setting two now for our fifth Sundays when we have them. So we'll times a year. It's, it, it's, it's really pretty melodic. Um, but first we begin with singing together our opening hymn, number 493. <laughs> A hymn of glory, let us sing, number 493. Please rise. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence.
being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Who 
proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue now with singing together hymn number 492 on Christ's ascension I now build, number 492. Jesus. 
If Jesus has risen from death in the flesh, and he has, so will you. If Jesus ascends into heaven and sits at the right hand of God in the flesh, so will you. You see, it matters. And the ascension of Christ to the throne of God is a feast to celebrate. If, however, we don't always see that, no worries. Before, G before he ascends, Jesus has to teach his apostles too. The text says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. As we read in the Gospels, these twelve men seem to have had a hard time understanding what Jesus meant. Time and time again, even here at the ascension, they were looking for Jesus to establish his political, worldly kingdom on earth. What part of my kingdom is not of this world do they not understand? Granted, they weren't there. He said, he said that to Pilate. But obviously, John knew about it. He recorded it. Prior to Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, the twelve seemed even to ignore Jesus' notices that he was going to Jerusalem to suffer and die and be raised on the third day. Jesus opens their minds so they see that his suffering, death, and resurrection were prophesied in the books of Moses, in the Psalms, and in the writings of the prophets. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. In fact, all of the Old Testament scriptures are about and point to Christ on the cross. Recall, for example, the temple sacrifices, the bronze serpent, and the story of Abraham being asked to sacrifice Isaac with the ram caught in the thicket by its horns as a substitute. It is this, Christ's atonement on the cross, that assures us of God's care in all those day-to-day -day stresses. Because the cross has reconciled us to, brought us back together with God. So be open ears, be open minds, for what Jesus teaches on this celebration of the ascension is relevant, it's pertinent to you. Jesus suffered, and on the third day rose from the dead. Now, in addition, he teaches that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is Jesus' commission to his apostles and to us to proclaim repentance for the forgiveness of sins in his name. The office of the ministry is all for the means of grace. It is the preaching of the law that accuses you of sin and the preaching of the gospel that shows you where to receive forgiveness. That's the purpose of this sermon and every sermon that's preached, or at least it's supposed to be. How important is that to you? Notice that the purpose of proclamation is not to help you live a better life. It's not to make you healthy, wealthy, or wise. Or even to extract worldly rewards and live your best life now. Jesus told his apostles, Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. In other words, Jesus will be sending the Holy Spirit. We celebrate that next week on Pentecost. This he does by the authority given him at the right hand of the Father. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, to the Mount of Olives. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. This is what we celebrate. 
The Son of Man is now ascended into heaven. Jesus will always be our Savior and our God, both in office and in essence. But he has also elevated mankind so that you once again have fellowship with God. Jesus is the man that the Father intended man to be. Yet he is the only begotten Son from all eternity. Now, remember again, what happens to Jesus in the flesh happens to you too. When Jesus rose from the dead, locked doors couldn't keep him out. When we rise from the dead, we will have glorious bodies that are no longer limited by the things that live in us now. Of course, Jesus still had the marks of his crucifixion in his wrist, in his ankles, in his side. But they didn't cause him any problems. In the same way, we very well might also still have some of the leftover marks of things that hurt us here. But they won't cause us any problems. If a man whose wrist was pierced through with a metal spike can now hold things and hug his friends and not feel any hurt or pain, it means that anything that hurts us now will not hurt anymore then. If Jesus can eat food and enjoy its taste and enjoy the fellowship of his loved ones, then so will we. I end up spending a lot of time telling people that heaven is not just sitting on a cloud, plucking on a harp, but being at the best party ever that lasts for eternity. And what's a party without good food and drink? Now let's look beyond the resurrection of Jesus to his ascension and see what that means to us. When Jesus ascended, he kept his flesh and blood body that he had from the time he was born in Bethlehem, which we celebrate every Christmas. He lived and did most everything like a normal human being during his life on earth, even to the point of suffering and dying on Good Friday. Then, on the third day, the first Easter Sunday, his flesh and blood body got up again with lungs breathing and heart pumping, and we celebrate all the time that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Forty days go by, and Jesus shows himself to his disciples and a number of other people. Over 500 people in all see Jesus after his resurrection. How's that for enough eyewitnesses to prove it in court? Then he takes his disciples up on the Mount of Olives and is lifted from the earth up into the heavens and disappears in a cloud. Then his flesh and blood body goes into the throne room of God and sits in power and dominion over the entire universe forever. Again, so what? There are a lot of people who tell me that they look forward to going to heaven, but they think that everything Jesus did will just barely be enough to sweep them through. They'll just go and find a nice little corner of heaven and stay out of everybody's way. But remember, what happens to Jesus in the flesh is what happens to you. You will not just barely make it into heaven and find some quiet little corner to stay in for eternity. No. You will also go to the throne room of God Almighty and sit in power and dominion over the new heavens and the new earth, right next to Jesus. When Jesus said that he goes to prepare a place for you, he didn't mean he was preparing an extra servant's quarters, or even an extra guest room, and certainly not that he was going to pull out a high-bed sofa in the den for you. 
He meant he was preparing an expansion of God's throne room with a throne just for you. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the writings of C.S. Lewis, but in his famous book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the great lion, Aslan, the Christ figure in the story, is the eternal ruler of all lands. But he sets up a palace with, with thrones for the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve, who are destined to come there and rule jointly together as heirs of his kingdom. This is the image promised by Christ's ascension. When you were baptized, you were adopted into the family of God. You became his precious and chosen daughters and sons. And you were named in his last will and testament as heirs who will inherit God's kingdom along with Jesus. That is what the ascension means to you, O sons and daughters of the King. Where Jesus goes in the flesh, there you go too. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your minds, your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. We continue now on page 176 with singing together our offertory, What Shall I Render to the Lord? Please rise. Lord of all mercy, you give. 
give and you take away. And you do so in ways and thoughts that are beyond our understanding. Comfort all who experience the sorrow and grief of children who have been given to them in life and taken away in earthly death. In times of sadness, strengthen their faith. Console them in your compassion. Give them understanding of your love. Point them to the body of Christ who bears this burden with them and grant them hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this nation. Grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to mind the sacrifices of those who served faithfully until death in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, since your Son will shatter kings when he executes judgment on the nations, keep Joseph our president, Michael our governor, Christina our mayor, and all our leaders from acting in ways that will earn them his wrath. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad, especially as we pray for our local law enforcement and Justin, Barry, Nathaniel, Clay, and Craig in our sheriff's office. Bless them with all wisdom to govern and protect us in accord with your righteous ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray in thanksgiving for the blessings you give to us, rejoicing in all your gifts of life, especially Jan, Tony, and all those celebrating birthdays, as well as Greg and Carol, and all those celebrating anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, as believers in your Son's name, we call on you to deliver all who suffer in our midst from sickness of body and mind and every other power of the enemy. Especially we pray for Patricia, Mary, Evelyn, and their ongoing needs. For Barbara, Tony, Mara, and their afflictions. And for all those we remember now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, keep us from hardness of heart and unbelief. Help us by your Spirit to believe the witness of those who saw your Son after he had risen and to joyfully recline at table with him today, eating his body and drinking his blood in a worthy manner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now on page 177 with the service of the Sabbath. The Lord be with you. Disciples, 
and in their sight was taken up into heaven, that he might make us partakers of his divine life. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
We continue now with our post-communion camp. We'll thank the Lord and sing His praise on page 181. Please rise. Uh, we sing, Hail the day that sees him rise. 